Hi everybody, this is Jen, also known as the Chronic Health Advocate. Today I'm going to talk to you about the pros and cons of setting up an online fundraising page such as GoFundMe and what you should consider in setting that up. Stay tuned. Today I wanted to talk about um, a topic, it's part of our fundraising series. Um, it's a topic that most of us think about if we have a chronic health condition or if someone does in the family. We certainly, uh, things are very expensive medical wise, whether it be treatments or a piece of equipment we need or to make modifications. And so often what ends up happening is that we have a fundraiser for ourselves or for someone else. So I do have quite a bit of experience fundraising. Um, also for non-medical, my kids are in activities, so we fundraise up the yin-yang for that. Um, but I do have experience fundraising for two uh, wheelchair vans. We've also had modifications into our home for our son and various things like that. So I'm going to speak a little bit from my perspective today um, and also just give you some tips that I've learned along the way that'll help you with your fundraiser. So today I wanted to speak specifically about having an online fundraising page that may be GoFundMe or that may be another means. GoFundMe seems to be, as of right now, the one that's um, really big and in and that people know about and is probably easiest to talk about, but I'll also give you a few other suggestions for a few other things. So I recommend, highly recommend, to go ahead and set up a page. So if you're fundraising for something, you probably, as we've discussed in other videos, you probably are going to have a few means of fundraising. And um, you may think that that's enough or just want to bypass the GoFundMe or, or the online page because you think it's hard to manage or a big deal. Um, just a personal story, when we were last fundraising for our van, um, I, I don't like people asking people outright for money. So it feels a little awkward to me. So I like to offer them something that they can either purchase or like an auction item or an event they go to or that sort of thing. And I had put off setting up the GoFundMe page. And so my brother took it upon himself to set that up, which was fantastic because it was also something I didn't have to worry about. And I learned a couple important lessons really quickly about that that I should have set one up right away and why. So just to uh, pre, pre, uh, prelude, precurse this with pre whatever, with um, what you need to do when you're doing any sort of fundraising and especially on these online pages is you need to be very transparent about what it is that you're fundraising for and your situation. Unfortunately, that means putting some of your personal information out there, um, but that kind of has to be done in order to be transparent with asking for money. So in addition to that, if you are the person setting up a page for someone, you should really make sure whatever information you post about that person or that family, just get them to check it over and make sure that you have the go ahead to public, publicly post that because it's going to be on the internet and you don't want to put something that's too personal or that they don't approve of. So always get their permission for that. So again, be transparent. One of the big reasons for that, and you've probably heard in the news, people who are going and setting up these pages, collecting all kinds of money, um, finding out afterwards that it was a scam. Um, so not only is that unethical, if you're not completely honest about what the funds are going to be used for and your situation, but it's also, you can face criminal charges. So that's something really important to keep in mind as well. And also 
not that those people care, I guess, but um, it ruins the experience for other people who legitimately need to be able to um, source from family and friends and, and others to get those funds. So we don't want to ruin that for the people who truly need it. So just to go over a few pros to setting up one of these online pages is that they're very easy to set up. Um, most online users have also heard of them. So if you're suggesting that they go to, to um, process funds through that, they're not as, um, I guess, leery to um, use that processing system to do so because they, they heard it's legitimate, so they're more likely to be, feel comfortable using that platform. Um, they're very easy to maintain, and they're very easy to donate through for the user. So of course you want something easy to set up, easy to keep going and update. You can also update through that how you're doing and also easy for the user who's making the donations. The other really nice thing about such page is they make it very easy for you to share uh, the page through anywhere. So anywhere, anyone around the world can view that page and make a donation. Now, the lesson that I learned quickly, and I'll talk about this with other event type things that we had tried. Some people are very well intentioned and they're, they're, but they're very busy and they can't attend an event or maybe they just don't have the, the time to get into like if you're selling something or doing something else for your fundraiser. A lot of people really just want the convenience of direct me to your page, bam, here's the money, I helped the I, I, I made a straight out donation um, because they don't have a way to, to uh, it's just quicker and easier for them. So you're actually doing a lot of people a favor by just having the page as an option. Um, another thing is a lot of us now, because we don't have friends just in our communities, our local communities, we have friends through the internet all around the world. So you may know someone who's associated even through the condition that you have or your child has or whatnot who's in a different country and they want to be able to easily make a donation. You don't have to get into messing around with all the funds conversion and everything. It can all be just done through that very simple done. So those would be the pros. Um, the cons, some people think of the fees. Now there are fees involved with anything that you do that's collecting money or um, just payments. They're the regular bank payment transaction fees. So obviously there are fees and the fees will come out of it and that will, um, I guess, eat into the profits that you've made. You have to consider that. So the fees for, I did check up the current fees for GoFundMe and there's there's no platform fee, which is one thing. Some of the platforms that you use, so it would be another company that's running a page, would have um, a monthly fee or a setup fee for using their technology. Um, so GoFundMe has no platform fee. They're very minimal, um, but they have a fee per transaction for what's collected. So as I said, the standard one for that, it's a standard PayPal current fee. So probably any means that you set up through doing a payment that way, you're going to have the same fee, if not more. So in addition to that, if you had someone suggesting to send you a large donation, um, something you might want to consider is to suggest that they could send you a check or they could also do an e-transfer. Um, and depending on, there may be an e-transfer fee with their bank, there may not. Um, to get into e-transfer fees, anyone who's done e-transfers, you do know you have to kind of mess around with those, like keep track of the amounts and, and do the deposits and things like that. But that's some way to get around um, the con of having the fees for using one of those online services. So I also went to the, the GoFundMe.com website um, just to grab some information off there. I just recommend you go check it out. All the information is very straightforward. So um, they also have an introduction video right now, which is great. I also recommend reading their questions page. Um, they say that they or they put themselves out as a 
personal online fundraising uh, website, uh, perfect for individuals, groups, and organizations. So it doesn't have to be, obviously, for your medical wheelchair or whatever else you need or your house renovations. It could be used for something else. As I said, just be transparent. Um, supposedly, GoFundMe markets themselves as the number one online fundraising site, and they do claim that you can have a, a website up and functional within 30 seconds. Obviously, it's going to take you a little bit longer to get all your information properly on that. Now, something that I would recommend, and maybe not everyone does, but it's just a feeling that I have, is to have someone else run that page. First of all, it's an easy way to outsource something that's quite simple and it's quite motivating for them because they can kind of see donations and that come in. Um, but have someone else uh, run that page and have them write up the description from their perspective or not from your perspective or your child's perspective. There's just something about it that seems more heartfelt um, and coming from someone who believes um, what they need is genuine. So have someone else do that story, a really close friend or, or someone. They'll also say things that are those kind of heartfelt things about a person or a family um, without it coming from you. It, it just it just makes the connection different. So in our case, my brother set that up and he said, of course, really kind things about us, which I never would have said those in there. And, and especially when you don't feel comfortable asking for money, right? It really helps to have the, the, the ask come from someone else who knows the family really well and knows how they struggled and can help be honest with that. So something else I also recommend before you get started or whoever gets started on this project is to go through the existing websites or profiles that are there and just see how people are setting up their websites and doing the like what information they're putting what what do you like what's the style how many pictures that sort of thing um, so just go through do your research on that and of course you don't have to use GoFundMe there are other websites available uh, one of which is fundraiser.com. I'll put the links. So F-U-N-D-R-A-Z-Z.com. My eyes are not as good as they used to be. And then also fundly.com. So F-U-N-D-L-Y.com. So I hope that was helpful for you, an introduction to the online processing platforms for um, GoFundMe and other websites. If you have any questions, certainly please ask. I'll be posting other videos in regards to other means of fundraising for your project. So please be sure to check those out and also subscribe to the channel. I'm also available for consulting. You can check the website for that. And I think that's it. I will have another update ready soon. Have a good day.